praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We give God all the glory and all the honor. For God is worthy to be praised. Amen and amen. Just bringing this over here. There we go. Hallelujah. Well, this is what has been laid upon my heart. If nothing changes, then nothing changes. You see, life is always full of change. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. I was speaking to an educational department as a guest speaker, and I released this. If nothing changes, nothing changes. And a lot of the professional people listening, and it was quiet. And so I repeated myself. I said, if nothing changes, nothing changes. And it was quiet. It was absolutely quiet. So I just uh, repeated myself. I said, if nothing changes, nothing is going to change. And somehow, somehow, Somebody got the, somehow somebody got the point. I, uh, anyway, somebody is trying to phone here. And let me just put that phone off. And they got the point. They got the point. So, here we go. Let's get right into this in John chapter 5. John chapter 5, okay. Are you ready? John chapter 5. Jesus walks into a situation. And this is the pool of Bethesda. And at this pool, there were five gateways, five gateways. But when Jesus Christ walked in, Jesus became the only gateway that could take care of a defeated mentality. When Jesus walked in, he became the only gateway that could take care of a defeated mentality. Why was there a defeated mentality? Why? Let's find out. So it says that Jesus went to the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. There it is. And around this, pool, there was the lame, the blind, the paralyzed, the crippled, all the broken wings. They were all gathered there. And the moment the water was stirred by an angel of God, in our modern day terminology, we interpret that is when the presence of God creates a stirring, okay? And then the angel went down at a certain time into the pool, stirred up the water, and then whoever stepped in first, see, somebody had to step in, into the stirring of God, and then uh, the, uh, the water, uh, when the person went into the water, that individual was made well of whatever disease, that person had. Now there was a certain man who had a spirit of infirmity for 38 years, beloved. 38 years. Pause and just think. How long this man surrounded himself in the atmosphere of his mind with that same environment of defeat of paralysis, of lame, of cripple. I want to make up my own word, crippleness. <laughs> and of uh, blindness. That environment was so intimidating that when Jesus Christ walked into this man's life, 
Jesus asked this man, Jesus asked this man, do you want to get well? And beloved, all this man could think about is all the excuses. You know, sometimes I talk to, I, uh, you know, somebody, and I will say, how are you? And then for the first 15 minutes, all they talk, or 10 to 15 minutes, is this problem, that problem, and then it's this problem, and then that went wrong, and then I'm expecting this to go wrong, and blah, blah, blah. Like I'm thinking, God, maybe I should never have asked how the individual is. And then I don't want to be rude, but then I have to say something. And then the individual, as they're going to take their next breath, I quickly slip my part in. I said, you know, I'm sorry to hear about what you're going through, but the very thing, God bless you, uh, Nick, God bless you. Then I will say, You've, you know, the Bible is very uh, alarming because the Bible alerts us that as we think, so we will become. And when I speak about the same thing over and over and over and over, I'm going to uh, cause the atmosphere in my mind to become so contaminated with that problem. Now, I'm not saying we do not acknowledge a problem. Of course we do. Of course. But then we take capture that problem and then we devise a strategy in how to conquer that situation. Because the Word of God says, as you think, so you become. As you think, so you become. That means the outworking of my daily circumstances is the way that I think and the way that I conduct myself is the way that is been happening or what I have seen that picture in my mind. So then I said to this individual, that and this was just a courtesy uh, a courtesy you know uh, of somebody who you hardly ever see you hardly ever see them and i had to sit and listen like 10 15 minutes to the same thing over and over and i thought no hang on i have to say something and i said to this person and I hardly ever see them, okay? I hardly have contact. I said, you know, that the whatever you say and whatever you keep talking about is what is going to feel welcome in the atmosphere of your mind. And it went quiet. <laughs> it went all quiet. Here is an example of a man 38 years at the pool of Bethesda. 38 years, beloved. And when help walked in, he could not understand help was standing in front of him. Jesus says, do you want to get better? Do you want to be made well? And his answer was, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another steps before me. Now watch this. What caused this man at this pool of Bethesda just to talk about that very way that he answered? He did not recognize hope. He did not recognize some encouragement. All he was caught up with, sir, I've got nobody to help me into the pool. He was so uh, captured by a defeated P. 
picture a defeated mentality. And he could not see any change. And as you can see here, I've got there, if nothing changes, nothing changes. If I keep talking about my past, I have got room to go backwards. If I only talk about my present, I will only be a maintainer. If I talk about my future desires and I bring that into my present, I become an obtainer, an obtainer. Now, we all face challenges and we need to discuss it. Absolutely. But if I only get stuck with a problem in my mind, and I don't see a solution or I don't endeavor to develop my attitude into a possibility thinker and say, wait, wait a minute. There must be a way out here. See, I can get stuck because if I only talk about the past, I've got room to go backwards. If I only talk about the present, I'm only a maintainer. But when I start talking about the future, I become an obtainer. Hallelujah. So this man, what caused him to behave like that? God bless you, Gene, and everyone else watching. Hallelujah. What caused this man to behave like this? God bless you, Renee. What caused him to behave like this? This man surrounded his life only with the lame, the blind, the crippled, the paralyzed. See, so he had a defeated mentality. All he saw was the problem because he only mixed with the problem instead of with some solutions. I don't know about you. <laughs> if I was at that pool of Bethesda, uh, if I was at that pool of Bethesda, let me put this here on the screen. Hallelujah. That's right. Yep, Nick. <laughs> If I was in that pool of Bethesda, I tell you, I would have been a, what I call it, a holy roller. <laughs> I would have rolled and rolled and rolled if I could not walk to that pool. Man, I would have been so desperate. I tell you, I would have made sure the night before that uh, I'm right at that pool. And I don't care who could help me, who could not help me. But if there was something in my body that could move, I would just move towards that pool, period. Or I would have shared that to somebody. Hey, come on. You're helping that guy in. Please help me. Just put me close to that pool. See, we have to do something different. I like this all the way. Where's Jean? Jean, are you in Australia or South Africa? Okay. What does she say? I'm somewhere in the future. I look much better than I look right now. That's right. Yeah, that was that's one of our little theme songs over here. Yes. Uh, what does Nick say here? Let me just see. Uh, I love these commands. Jump in full force. Amen. Amen. You see, there comes a time in our lives we have to abandon the old way of thinking. We've got to abandon the defeated picture in the mind and say, wait a minute. I'm provoked. You got to me. But I'm going to go to my God and I'm going to pray. And out of that, I'm going to step out and we're going to get a plan together. And we are not going to be defeated, period. That's it. Because God has not made us a defeated people. He made us more than conquerors. All right. So back here, see here. If nothing changes, nothing changes. If my speech only talks about the problem, oh, well, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to keep talking about that same problem over and over. You know what? You will energize yourself and you take, you, you zap out uh, emotional energy and you become tired and you feel stressed and all that negative stuff. All right, before I close... Let me just summarize here quickly, all right? So Jesus, after saying to this man, the man says, I've got no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I'm coming, another steps down before me. So he actually was coming. Somehow he could move because he says, uh, uh, but while I am coming, 
Another steps down before me. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to get right next to that pool. And the moment there's a stirring of the presence of God or the angel stirs that water, I'm just going to roll in. Hallelujah. But you see, here's the thing. Are you ready? Here's the thing. When our thought patterns develop, becomes crippled because of the pictures of, all I see is people that are crippled. If my thought patterns and my reasoning becomes lame because I only see lame things in front of me. Are you with me? If I become blind in how to see opportunity because all I mix with are the things that are blind in life. That's when you develop a defeated paralysis of mindset. And I love what Jean brought up. Somewhere in the future, I look much better than I look right now. That's a, my, a little theme song. Okay, somewhere in the future, you've got to see yourself looking much better than you look right now. Because we are not undertakers. God bless you, Sharon. We are not undertakers. We are overcomers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we all come through stuff. We all come through heavy, heavy stuff. But you know what? It's up to us to decide and make that decision. Am I going to see the problem? Or am I going to see the one who's far bigger than the problem? Christ Jesus. And Jesus said to him, as I'm closing right now, he said, rise up, rise, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. And that's my encouragement to all of us, starting with me. Rise up. Take up that problem, that thing that's causing you to, you know, feel comfortable in lying down in the problem, that bed or whatever it is. It's a typology. Take up that thing. Say, you're not going to you know, restrict me and I'm not going to be comfortable and just accept the way that my life is. I'm going to change because if nothing changes, nothing changes, period. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And remember, Jesus is, yes, Lord. Until next time, stay tuned and be encouraged. Be encouraged. God bless you. Bye now.